It's time for the Roots and Roots show with your host, Greg Rashid, bringing you history and music from the Black American diaspora. Greg and his guests' goal is to root the show's information in your psyche, providing you the roots to expand knowledge within your community. Now, here's your host, Greg Rashid. Well, Swati Kap, which means hello and also goodbye in Thai. This is Greg Rashid with another edition of the Root Root Show. Heard from many people at their convenience on various platforms on the internet, but a lot of folks listen every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Mountain Time on KUHS Denver.com, created by the one and only that legend himself, Henry Arthur Letter. I want to say hi to all my friends in the Colorado region. Hope to get back there sometime next year to visit and all that. But anyway, we're going to get straight into our interview because I this is going to be a little different, but not really, because a lot of you who've listened to me over the years know I love boxing. I'm a boxing historian. In fact, I had, I had a, a cable show where I was known as the boxing historian. But I'm going to get into this interview because I'm going to be we're going to be talking about a something you may want to get for uh, Christmas, for any or birthday, for anything. I'm talking about a card and dice game called Glory Days Boxing, created by Anthony Crooks. And I'm going to do the interview right now with him. Hope you enjoy it on the Root and Root Show. And again, this is Greg Rashid with the Root and Root Show. And I, you know, I know a lot of you listening at your convenience at various times, but a lot of you listening live on KUHS. And I um, am so happy to have my guest on here today because it's the, it's starting to be the holiday season, Christmas and all is coming up and a lot of you are trying to figure out gifts and all, but this is for, this is for the sports fans, in particular, the boxing aficionado, which I am, I'm, as a lot of you know, who've listened to me for many, many years, I love boxing. And I was told about this game because I have some other boxing games, but I was told, you know, Greg, you got to pick up this game. You'll love this game if you love boxing and love boxing history. I said, okay, I'll get it. And because I'm in Thailand, as you know, I had to get the PDF of the game. And it is, it is incredible. And what I'm talking about is the game Glory Days Boxing. And I have online the creator, the originator, the founder of the game, everything, Anthony Crooks. Are you there, Anthony? I am here. I'm happy to join you. I'm happy to have you on. And my listeners, I want to tell you, too, that Anthony He's on here, even though he's in the midst of going through COVID and just send him some positive vibes because we want him to get healthy to make some more games. But I'm just so happy to have you on and talk about this wonderful game, Glory Days Boxing, because I, you know, I have just enjoyed playing this thing and it is just incredible. And it's just, I want to talk to you first of all about why you decided to even create the game. What What is your background as far as boxing and all that and just game, you know, creating, you know, game creation and all. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So um, background in boxing, I boxed um, through PAL police athletic leagues as a teenager and, um, uh, you know, was, was nothing. Spe- I did qualify for Utah state golden gloves twice to not win. So, you know, a, a mediocre uh, to, to maybe a little better than an average amateur fighter, and, but boxing's always been a passion of mine. And I got to, uh, the original title bout uh, when I was 16 back in 1979. And that's funny. That's when I got it in 79 also. Yeah. And And I I used to go ahead. Go ahead. No, I I say I used to stay. uh, I had a a job during the summer there at a restaurant and I'd stay there, you know, until three, four in the morning with one of the owner's sons. And we just run these massive tournaments, you know, very, and I live, give Jim Trunzo a lot of credit. He was definitely the godfather of this. And, you know, played that for a while. And, you know, to get to where I am now, where I decided to create this, I um, initially just wanted to create a a boxing game that, you know, I wanted to play. And the only thing I did not like about uh, title box, again, it's a great game is I, I liked to roll dice. So I worked, uh, worked on designing this game based around dice, which I think gives it a little more randomness and, you know, a little bit uh, wider variety of results. And, initially had not planned to sell it at all. It was just, like I said, for my own enjoyment and did a couple of uh, YouTube videos and there was some interest there. So uh, 
you know, at that point, I committed to releasing that. And to me, once you commit to something, you're you're bound to follow through. And so That's I right. kind of got out of my comfort zone. And uh, yeah, I released it in um, June of uh, 2019. And here we are, uh, 1100 fighters later. <laughs> my, yeah, you, you got that right. And uh, I got to say, too, that you got me out of my comfort zone, uh, Anthony, because I just basically gave up on cards and dice games. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm going computer. It's easy. I don't have to sit here and write anything. But this game, this game is, you know, reading about it and then people talking about it. Say, okay, I'm going to break my, you know, just like get out of my comfort zone and just try this game. If I don't like it, you know, I, I just say, well, at least I tried. It. And I'm glad I did. It, it's just something, you, you know, it's, it's great because it gets them to, and you have to, and would you say, Anthony, you have to know, the history and styles of some of these fighters to really appreciate the game. And yeah, and that's, you know, that's another thing that I kind of did on purpose because, you know, boxing and, you know, boxing over the last uh, 20 years or so is kind of, or even going back 20, 30 years, maybe it's just kind of suffered a downturn in popularity with all the massive number of titles and all that stuff. And <clears throat> excuse me, but um I wanted to kind of bring back the history. And, and one thing that's been, I think, my greatest joy is as people play this, they've told me, yeah, I didn't know who this guy was. I went back and researched him and read about him. And, you know, so they're kind of getting engaged in the history of boxing through some of the older fighters in the game, which I think is cool. How much research did you do? How many years of research? Because you, I mean, you got, what I did with, and I have to say this, with your game to prove, if it was good for me, if it was a good game, rather than doing like Muhammad Ali versus uh, Mike Tyson, which would be obvious or Sonny, you know, you know, Joe Lewis versus Jack Dempsey or something like a Rocky Marciano. I, you know, I just put some obscure ones in there to see what would happen because I know their styles and fighting styles. And I just did, you know, I did two Chris's, Chris Bird, former heavyweight champion at one time, and Chris Areola, who I think, was a champion for a second. Yeah. And I said, these guys, like a lot of people don't know them. And I just went through, you know, just did the game with them. And I did some other games, you know, other bouts too. But this one, it actually, I could, in my mind, I could picture the whole fight. I mean, you laid it out perfectly because what happens is that eventually anyone who knows Chris Ariola, you know that he's a bleeder. Yeah, a, you know he can fight. He, I mean, he actually, if he trained, he probably would have been a major fighter. But you know, he was busted up by the sixth round in the game that I played by Chris Bird. And the thing about it that I noticed that the defensive side of Chris Bird, how he actually was a defensive fighter, and everything mm -hmm. that Ariola would throw at him, he would block or counter. And I said, man, this guy is hit on a great game here. He really has a down path. And I just want to commend you for that because that, that is, to do that, you know, that took a lot of time and effort to come up, you know, to come up with it that way because all the cards, and you can spend, I spend time sometimes just reading the card, not playing the game, just reading because every card is just, it's individual cards. And you could have easily gotten away with like, you know, well, I'll make Rocky Mountain's card the same as Mike Tyson's. You could have done that easily and no one would have like followed you. But how much, I mean, the time you took, just explain that in a little more detail. Oh, sure. So originally the game design, uh, the initial game took probably about, um, about close to a year uh, and went through several different uh, iterations. And, you know, I had to get to the point where initially it was just um, three punches landed. And I'm like, you know, I, I think it helps um the user or the player picture the fight better if you put descriptions of the punches and then try and match those descriptions to the fighter style you know like rocky right. marciano might come in and land a thunderous right while muhammad ali is going to be snapping the jab and so i tried to do that and then the the last thing i came up with that um helped you know that i think kind of bring out the individuality in, in each different fighter was the traits and um, I just kind of went through and thought of different fighters like, uh, you know, Sweet Pea Whitaker and, and uh, obviously Roger Mayweather Jr. And 
um, you know, Jack Dempsey, the killer instinct with him and, and just kind of developed as many traits as I could think of based on different fighters and fighting styles and, um, and incorporated those into the game. And, and that's where I think, um, I guess, I guess that's what I'm most proud of, where I think that adds a little bit of individuality to the uh, fighters themselves. Yeah, I agree with that. And listeners, if you're just tuning in, I'm talking with uh, Anthony Crooks, the author of the, the creator of the, I always interview authors usually, but you are the author and the creator of this game, Glory Days Boxing. And it's a card and dice game. Now, I know there are some folks listening, and I want to ask you this, especially for some younger folks that listen to the program. There are some folks that are probably saying, well, I'm not going to get that because it's not, it's not a video game. It's not a computer. And, and, you know, what do you say to folks like that? I, I would say, quite honestly, and I, I was, I got away, I, I promise, Greg, I got away from cards and dice for a long time, probably. Well, me uh, too. You brought me back to it. I mean, this is... <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I was gone for maybe close to 30 years. And, you know, one thing I found, I ran across a couple of YouTube videos, and then I, a few years ago, bought a Joe's Game Payoff Pitch Baseball. And I found that there was just something relaxing about rolling the dice and just kind of taking your time. And, you know, if you play three innings and want to come back and finish later, you know, where video games sometimes, and I, you know, I, I have played video games, obviously. And, you know, sometimes they get a little bit more intense and you, you get a little bit, I guess, too serious with them. And to me, just cards and dice are kind of relaxing and casual and, you know, allow you to uh, create the scene of the game you're playing in your mind versus looking at it on a TV or a computer screen. I can, yeah, I can go with that. I can go with that in one sense. Um, and I have to say this too, there's something you did, because once I decided, you know, agreed to, you know, that we agreed that you would be on here to be interviewed, I was checking out some of your videos and I really, you know, I admire the fact that you actually put a video out of a, I won't say a competitor, but another game, Legends of Boxing, which I also had. And you were so complimentary. I said, that's nice. You didn't have to do that. He could have promoted his game, but he co- he promoted this game as well. And that that really showed me about your character. And I really, you know, that's something, you know, because you, you know, I think you made a quote in there at the end that, um, you know, we're all, you know, we're all like small, you know, we're not major businesses or nothing, but we're all just trying to just have fun and make, you know, bring back some wonderful memories. And I'm just glad that you, you know, that's rare to see in this day and age. Not so much competition, but just you know, supporting, supporting each other. Yeah. I, I think that's important because, you know, like you said, none of us are big corporations. We're not Sony or, or EA sports and, you know, we're not going to get rich off this. It's something we do as a passion. And there's a lot of great guys, you know, the game you mentioned, legends of boxing, Gary Brown, great guy. We have a very friendly relationship. We buy each other's products and, you know, he's, he does great stuff. I'm, I'm getting ready to get his hockey game, which looks like a lot of fun, actually. And, it you know, Keith is. Avalone, play.com. And, you know, just genuine nice guys. And, of course, Joe Bryan, who we talked about, who, I, you know, who uh, carries the game on his website for me. You know, so there's no competition to me. It's just a lot of good guys that create a passion. And, you know, I, I look at it more as a, um, a fraternity rather than a, a competitive type thing. It is, you know, and there are a number of sites online, on Facebook, on Twitter, a little way. You know, a lot of us gamers are there, and I know a lot of folks are like, Greg, I didn't know you were, you know, you're, you're, in your, you're 68, and you're, you're still in the game. Set. Yeah, keeps your mind going. And that's the one thing I want to ask you about, too, that the thing about this game, most card and dice games, but this one, yours in particular, it does keep you, you know, alert and active. It does keep, you know, because you are doing some math. It's not, you know, it's not trigonometry, but it is math that you're doing at times. And it's something, that, were you thinking about that as you were creating the game? It's something as far as a, you know, just to promote, you know, just your cognitive skills and all. Yeah, I, it's, I, I tried to keep a, a balance on that. I didn't want to, you know, burden the player with too much uh and that, you know, that's another reason I don't have a lot of charts with the game, too. I'm not a big chart guy, so I wanted most of the stuff to come off the cards to where it engaged the player, but didn't, uh, you know, bog them down, writing stuff down, and also going to, you know, three, four, five, six different charts to find out results as well. So 
you know, kind of, I guess, a minimalist approach that was still somewhat engaging and, you know, and kept the uh, player's attention. Right. It, it does that. It just keeps you. Um, and But I have to say, I, you know, I would disagree on one thing. There is some, you know, I have felt it's good tension, but I felt in some of these fights I've done, it's like I have got caught up like I'm actually looking at the fight. I am looking at it, you know, on my desktop, but just looking, you know, like it's a real fight. And I'm like saying, you know, and I actually in one of the fights, I, remember I was complaining, like, you know, why did the judge give it that? What is the judge looking at? You know, and I'm saying, <laughs> well, I'm just rolling my dice, but still, <laughs> that wasn't a 10 nines around. But, you know, it's just so, it's fascinating. It's a really fun game, and you don't have to be, you know, I think you mentioned it earlier, but you don't really have to be a boxing fan, a boxing historian, a nut like myself. You can get this and just grab, you know, just have a, just a nice little friendly game from time to time. Yeah, and I've, I've actually, you know, and I, I've gotten feedback from that, which I, you know, I appreciate a lot. It, it's, it's still kind of uh, overwhelming to me to see like people on YouTube or whatever playing the game. And I'm like, man, that's my game. And, you know, and they enjoy it. And, you know, I, it's, it's also kind of humbling too, but it's also very cool. Cause again, I'm just so passionate about the sport and, you know, it's like I mentioned earlier, it enabled some people to go back and learn about some of these fighters and, you know, like everyone, I would hope, you know, that's a heavyweight fan knows about Jack Johnson and, you know, his prominence in the sport and the trailblazer he was, but, you know, just, just going in that vein around that time, there was a lot of great African-American fighters that just don't get to do Joe Gans and um, the original Joe Walcott, uh, Walcott the Barbados right. demon, you know, guys, guys like that, that I just, um, I enjoy the ability to kind of, I guess, bring them to life. And, and so people that maybe not, or were maybe not familiar with them, uh, you know, get to know about them and research them. And I think this guy was pretty good and he could probably, uh, you know, maybe hang with some modern fighters. Yeah. I was really shocked when I, you know, when shocked but happy, but also amazed. I said, God, he's got Peter Jackson in there. He had Joe Gaines. And how, in fact, uh, I have, the oldest card I have as far as baseball collection I have is a Joe game from 1902. Nice. You know, you know I, I, it goes with me everywhere. But how did you do the research on folks like Gaines and Jackson? Did you go to the old news? How did you do it? Old newspapers? What did you do? Oh, my God. It, it takes usually about... Um... Uh, two months or even a little longer for each set and it, it involves I do um, initially of course I select the fighters I want to have in the set and then I will go and, and based on what I know of the sport kind of put them into tiers you know of, of how good or right. in relation to their time you know and then um, it's a lot of a lot of time on box rec uh, the, the nice thing about boxing is there's probably more historic videos you can find on YouTube um, than any other sport. So I'll go back. Anything I can find on YouTube, I will watch again and again and again, even if it's only a three, six minute clip. And then um, I also read books. You know, I've read uh, Peter Jackson's uh, life story and just, right. just some other heavyweights from back there. Um, uh, Tom Sharkey, who was uh, never a champion, but a tough guy and very underrated. Um, I read the book about the um, Jay Kilray and John L. Sullivan fight, which is an excellent read. So, and of course, uh, for Jack Johnson, I read uh, Unforgivable Blackness, which is an amazing book and, and really sheds a lot of insight into yeah. the man as a person, not just a fighter. So yeah, a lot, just a lot of that. And then of course, um, going through newspaper archives to get descriptions of the fight. And I kind of, one, one good thing about the uh, sports writers at that time too, there was no television. So they were a little bit more descriptive for the big fights in their newspaper articles to where you could actually picture the fights to a degree because that was their job back then. But you didn't have, you know, radio or, or TV, right. as I mentioned. So if you didn't see the film live or the fight live and they didn't make a film of it to tour around the country, um, you had to go by what the newspaper article said. So, you know, a lot, a lot of great gems. You can uh, get a good idea of how a fighter was just based on stuff you can find in newspaper archives. I'm glad you said it. It's funny, though, especially with the black fighters back then, before radio and all this, that they would, you know, the pre-hype, and I shouldn't say hype, but actually it was a pre-hype of these fights. And many times, 
there would be a lot of little racial comments made in some of the columns that these sports writers were writing, these white guys writing this stuff. But when it got to the fight itself, as I noticed in reading some of these newspaper articles and some books I've read, some of them that you, you were talking about, they would get straight into just the fight. There was no racial anything. It was like straight fight and going blow by blow and none of that. And that, you know, that really says a lot as far as helping you understand what these, you know, what these fighters were about and also what they had to go through. Because one thing I was thinking about looking at some of these older fighters, the black fighters, and I was saying, I don't know how he would do this and probably he wouldn't do it, but would there be something in there? Because I was looking at the rare play. I haven't read all the rare plays that you put in there, but would there be something in there like fighter gets in the ropes and he is the crowd is hitting his legs with a you know for a blackjack or something something like that something weird like that because that actually would happen yeah no and that that would actually probably be something fun to make as a uh um i guess uh time specific uh right, alternative right. chart for sure because you know even even going back to the london prize ring days um a lot of times you would have because you know boxing has always been a big gambling sport so you would have supporters um trying to undermine opponents uh back in some of those old bare knuckle fights as well and a lot of times they devolve into riots and stuff so yeah that might be something to do uh later down the road is a kind of a, like i said a, a alternative timeline a, a historical kind of random or rare event i hope you do that because i definitely would want that i don't want to see that yeah that would be that would be really fun that would be something and one thing too that you do in this um in the game which was actually a bonus as far as the freebie is that you have the women fighters i was really you know i said wow you actually went through the women fighters and and talk about your process in that. Well, I, I actually have to defer on that. Um, the the uh, female fighters were created by a, um, a member of the community, actually, who's uh, very heavily into uh, um, women's boxing. And what I did is I spent some time with him and kind of went through my process. And um, he sent me some test fighters. And, and I'll be 100% transparent, but I'm not as close to as well versed in women's boxing as I am in, in uh, the men's sport, obviously. And, you know, so I would, I would look at things and I would ask him questions about the things that I felt were a little bit out of line, but um, you know, so I think, and then it was Mark Jones is the one who created it. I think he put out a very good set that is also, uh, you know, garnered some enjoyment from the community. So yeah, oh, yeah. I have to give hundred percent credit to him on that. I had very little to do with that. Yeah. You know, well, it's something, yeah. Shout out to him and, if he does another set, please tell him to put uh, Heather the Heat Hardy in there. Because I did not see Heather in there. Who's that? Heather the Heat Hardy. Okay. Yeah, she, she's, kind of, she's getting up there in years now, but she's, she's still bad. Though. She's something. Now, I know there are some listeners um, are saying, you know, is he going to put out an MMA you know, game or something? Because that's, you know, a lot of us just, you know, watch him and I have a very good, you know, he's almost like a son to me in, in, in Denver who he's a MMA freak. He just loves MMA. I took him to, to a match about bouts many, many years ago in Denver when I lived there. Are you even thinking about that? Um, I actually have, and, and even, even at my advanced age, I, uh, I dabble in jujitsu a little bit just to oh, try and keep strong. So I'm, I'm, fairly familiar with a lot of the different aspects of MMA. Um, and I've played around with the tentative design. The thing that uh, I'm kind of really stuck on is there's so many more transitions in that sport, such as going from stand up to clinch to ground right, fighting. Right. And to, you know, so I'm, I'm, I've given thought to trying to get that into a system that would flow where it would also be accurate and to pick the fighters. And that's, kind of where I'm hung up on that, that now. And that's kind of on the back burner where I do, uh, while I do the uh, college football seasons and then um, for the boxing game, I'll have a fictional set coming up uh, probably towards the end of the year. And then a uh, one, another real life set uh, with some re-rates and basically fighters that people want to see. And I'll do that okay. uh, early next year. 
I hope you include in that next set of uh, oldie, but you know, to me, an oldie but goodie, uh, Elmer uh, Violet Ray. Elmer Ray, uh huh. Yeah, he's like the um, the Ernie Shavers of that of the forties, you know, the late thirties, forties, and early fifties. Yeah, he was something. You know, one of the hardest hitters ever, as far as you know, kale expert. Something, but he, yeah, that, I, uh, go ahead. Oh, I don't say he actually is in the um, the uh, heavyweight number two set. Oh, I don't have that. I have to get that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have to get that. I definitely have to get that. But I want, you know, what do you hope to, you know, you kind of mentioned, but in concluding this interview, what do you hope to accomplish? What did you hope to accomplish with the game? What do you hope, what do you see in the future with the game? Um, you know, quite honestly, uh, the, the ultimate goal when I decided to release it was, um, you know, I'm, I'm coming up on retirement in a couple of years and um, wanted something to keep me busy, uh, you know, a, a passion I could do in retirement. I've got a lot of hobbies. And so that, that was kind of the uh, the idea there where I could have something again that was just a little side business that I didn't have to take too seriously. And, you know, it, it again, I do it as a passion and, and joy for myself. And, you know, if, if other people like it, that just is like icing on the cake. So that was just kind of to keep me busy in, in uh, later years coming up when we're not traveling. That's great. That's something that didn't ask you. Let me ask you this. Um, your favorite fighter of all time. Favorite fight? Fighter, fighter. And fight too. Fighter. Favorite fight and fighter. Um, oh, gee, that's such a tough one. Um, uh, if so, I know. Probably, quite honestly, Thomas Hearns. I, I think because oh, he was he was so underrated as a boxer. You know, people always talk about his right hand, which obviously is his power is, is elite, but you know, I mean, you look at his first fight with Sugar Ray before he got stopped. He outboxed. Well, he was you know, winning so the fight. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so Tom, Tommy Hearns and, and of course, that three round war he had with Hagler is always going to be one of my favorite fights. Oh, yeah. I, That's uh, my favorite. Mine too. I, I wish I wish Hearns had fought a smarter fight and not tried to trade with Marvin Hagler, but it was an awesome fight while it lasted. Um, uh Another another fight that I really enjoyed was um, the second uh, Boom Boom Mancini Livingstone Bramble fight. Oh God! Um, oh man! That was just a war, and it, you know, getting to the end where Mancini was begging with the uh, the ref to let him finish the fight, and it, you know, those, those guys had animosity, but they I think they both gained a lot of respect for each other after that second fight. It was just such a war. Um, and then uh, a lot of great light heavyweights from the 70s. The light heavyweight division in the 70s to me was epic, where you had uh, Matthew Saad Muhammad, uh, Dwight Muhammad Kwai, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, you know, um, uh, uh, geez, uh, Pat. Eddie, uh, Eddie uh, Mustafa Muhammad. Uh, yeah. And, and so uh, many. James I actually Scott. met him a couple of years ago at uh, Floyd Mayweather's gym in Vegas, an opportunity oh, to meet him. You know, but yeah, there were so many light heavyweight. That it was, it, we could go to, a, we could do a whole show on just the light, all, all the division. That light heavyweight division was something. And there is, there are, I think there's a new book out about. Well, I'm going to interview the author about Matthew Saad Muhammad. Fascinating story. Just a fascinating guy. You know, tragic in one sense, but just just amazing what he had to go through. Just an amazing guy, but. Yeah, we have to conclude. I'm sorry, I, I could go all day with you with this, but how? If anyone wants to get the game, tell my listeners how they can get it and how they can contact you for anything else. Um, it, it is available at uh, sidelinestrategy.com, which uh, again is a site uh, Joe Bryan sells his payoff pitch um, baseball game, and uh, it's available in both PDF and then stateside. Uh, there's a printed version as well. And if you are out of the country in order PDF, I would be more than happy to uh, send the uh, print template so you can get a more accurate, uh, I guess, or a more um, precise version of the cards as they would come in the printed set. You just have to be able to get those uh, printed out on 11 by 17 card stock oh, okay. um, is, is the only caveat there. But they, uh, yeah, I definitely, am, I've done that a couple of times for people out of the country who could uh have that capability, then they have the exact printed cards, and it's a lot cheaper 
um, than paying, you know, $70 for shipping for right. the game. Yeah, because I think I initially asked you about that, you know, getting it over here, because I would love to have the actual, I mean, I have the game, but the actual board game, but no, I'm more than happy with what I got right now. So, Anthony, I just want to thank you for coming on today. I'm going to get you back on again when you, when the new stuff comes out. And um, just stay well. Just get, you know, get healthy real quickly. Thank you so much. Anything else you want to say today just before we conclude? No, I, I, I appreciate you uh, supporting the game. And it was, it was a pleasure to meet and talk to you tonight. And I, I definitely would love to come back on and talk boxing with you sometime in the future for sure. Oh, we, we definitely would do that. You take care, Anthony. All right. Have a good one. Take care, Greg. And I hope you enjoyed that interview with uh, Anthony Crooks and talking about his game, Glory Days Boxing. In fact, I may make this the boxing show every week. No, I don't know. But you know, a lot of you who are following me, you know I love boxing. And this game, if you're a boxing fan, and if, even if you're not, it will make you one. So check it out. Check out the game, Glory Days Boxing. And, but we're going to get into some boxing music right now because I... I want to do some songs here that are dedicated to boxing, starting with a sister one, Nana Carl, and 15 Rounds for Jesus. Let's say that on the Root and Root Show. Round 
John comes back, weak in the knees and both eyes black. Round eight, whiskey still straight, but John's still swinging like a rusty gate. Round nine, I see the losing sign. According to points, John's far behind. Round ten, looks like the end. Whiskey keeps hitting him again and again. John's folding up like a paper sack. Uh uh, there goes John. He's flat on his back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eighty. Gents, that's the end of the bout. Bad, bad whiskey has knocked him out. Come on over here, bad, bad whiskey, and say something to the fans. Uh, 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 hello, Mama my, my Wine and Papa Jed. Uh, it, it a good fight. I, 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 I'm glad I win. Punch and roll like hell. Say Joe don't talk much, but he talks all the time. They say Joe don't talk much, he talks all the time. Now you can look at Joe, but you sure can't read his mind. Rabbit say to the bee, what makes you sting so deep? Rabbit say to the bee, what makes you sting so deep? Bee say I sting like Joe and rock them all to sleep.
We have a tune now that is a bit unusual in as much as it was written by our trumpet and flugelhorn player, Clark Terry, and the light heavyweight champion of the world, Archie Moore, who, as you may know, is an avid jazz fan and a musician. We'd like to play now a tune they call Lil' Old Mongoose, which happens to be Archie Moore's sporting name.
you don't know what the city is getting. The crimp that the trim of the chest are gonna show with everything but you printing, you know. Time flies, doesn't seem a minute since the turn around the bars at the chest boys in it. All change, don't you know, when you play at this level, there's no ordinary venue. In Iceland, or the Philippines, or Hastings, or this place. One night in Bangkok and the world's growing oyster The farther temples but the pearls ain't free You'll find a garden and the golden cluster And if you're lucky then the gods say she I can feel the angels sliding up to me One pound, very like another in your head down of your pieces, brother It's very really such a beauty to be looking at the bar the what do you mean? You see one crowd of polluted sticky town. Two girls walking sweet, summer set up, and the summer set down sweet. Get tired to talking to a tourist whose every moves among the pyramids. I get my kick above the waistline, sunshine. One night of day that makes a hard man humble. Not much between the spirit and excess. Anyway, <laughs> that was the one and only Mike Tyson from the uh, soundtrack of the movie Hangover 2. And uh, no, the rumor is I didn't come over here because of that movie. But anyway, that's Mike Tyson. Um, same, I don't, I'm not going to say singing, but that was uh, One Night in Bangkok on the Root and Root Show. And before that, we did um, the Dave Bailey Sextet. And he did a tribute to uh, the little old mongoose also known as Archie Moore, might have been a champion of the world back in the 50s. And that was that cut. And it was written by uh, the trumpet player Clark Taylor, Harry. And before that, we went back to the um, 20s with uh, Reverend J.M. Gates. And he's talking, and this is Tiger Flowers' last fight. Tiger Flowers was a middleweight champion. He beat Harry Grubb. And if you don't know about Tiger Flowers, Please Google him. Amazing story. Died very young. And um, that's what he's right, uh, t re, uh, talking about in that song. Actually, a sermon. And before that, we did Memphis Minnie, the one and only Memphis Minnie. I'm crazy about Miss, Memphis Minnie. And that was He's in the Rain. Talking about Joe Lewis and those folks betting on him. Before that, we did uh, the Count Basie Orchestra featuring the one and only Paul Rogerson on vocals and King Joe, call, talking about Joe Lewis. Then we did Sugar Ray Robinson singing, actually rapping from 1959, Knock Him Down Whiskey. And we started to set off with a uh, Sister Winona Carr 
15 rounds for Jesus. And I have queued up also some Muhammad Ali stuff. Well, when he was cast as playing with Sam Cooke, but I don't have the time to play all that today, but we'll do it next time. And we've played some of that before on the Root and Root Show, and we will again. But again, I want to thank uh, Anthony Crooks for coming on and talking about his great game, Glory Days Boxing. Please check it out. It's an uh, excellent game if you're into board games. If you're not, and if you're not into the history of boxing, check it out anyway, because you'll learn some stuff. It's like a, you know, one thing I didn't say during the interview, it is, if you just read the cards and the, you know, it's like a, a, a boxing history book. And it's just really good, really good, you know, excellent game. I recommend it highly. But I hope you enjoyed the show today on the Root and Root Show. Um, got a lot of activities come up here in the next, um, through the end of the year and beyond and beyond, beyond special things going on. And I want to thank those folks out there who send me messages via, via Facebook, also on Twitter and email. And thank you for suggestions and all that. And I will, I always uh, depend on listeners to give me ideas for shows. And they will be, be doing those suggestions given to me. But again, go in love and go in peace. And again, know yourself. Know yourself because you can't help anyone. You can't do anything unless you know yourself. So please do that. Help a senior along the way in your neighborhood. Help a young person. Because even though we are supposedly out of pandemic, it's still going on. Anthony has COVID. There are people here in Thailand right now getting COVID. It's all over. Things have not changed, unfortunately, but hopefully there will be a silver lining, a rainbow coming for all of us very soon. So go in love and go in peace. Know yourself. We'll see you next time on the Root and Root Show. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. And remember, spread the knowledge, share the power.